Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov's Chess Channel and welcome to our Basics in Chess series. So in this series we're following opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we're continuing with some middle game strategies again, today we're uh, continuing with our series attacking themes in the middle game. I've analyzed so many many attacking possibilities in the middle game like the queen and bishop battery against your opponent's fajeto you can also check out my previous video from the series today we're continuing with our middle game strategies with the so-called rook lift attack the rook lift attack is very important to recognize in your own middle game because this rook lift you see now in a couple of examples can be really really dangerous your opponent basically doesn't have good counterplays uh, against your uh, against your rook lift but there are uh, several rules uh, i've sorted out the most important rules of the potential rook lift and these are the three that i've already written here for you first of all you should uh, place your rook lift when you have gained some space so that's why in the opening it's very important to play like uh, for instance if white plays e4 or d4 we have already occupied the fourth rank so it means the rook could go behind this pawn on the third rank and uh, maybe dance a little bit on the third rank attacking some other minor pieces attacking uh, the, um, the king and also create some other tactical threats so that's why you see is uh, it's very important to create space in in chess space is a very very important segment of, of the chess game and that's why you should in the opening play very actively play with some space advantages trying to create breathing spaces for your pieces because if your pieces are a little bit cramped then you ca cannot find good squares for them and then they will be passive and you get uh, maybe smashed by your opponent so uh, the most important uh, principle of a potential rook lift is this static center setup and so it means it's uh, the game uh, shouldn't be dynamic in the center that's the most important thing when the game is dynamic in the center when maybe there is some clash between some pawns in the center then you shouldn't try a rook lift because then the position can get opened you could have some back rank problems you could have some um eight rank problems uh, on the first rank problems you could have some tactical problems the king could be endangered but when the position is static uh, when it when the position is not dynamic then a potential rook lift could be possible but again i'm pointing out you should be careful with some rook lifts because uh, the back rank problems are really really one of the uh, most trouble problems that you can have in your own position and the, one of also the important uh, things to recognize about the rook lift is that the rook lift is possible uh, when you have a good activity with some other pieces it means when you have maybe some active knights when you have some active bishops maybe the queen is on a good place and uh, maybe you don't see a good pawn move uh, that could crack the position then this rook lift should be probably the next best move because then uh, the rook needs improvement and the rook lift would be sort of a, uh, an improvement of the piece so uh, but uh, i'll explain it more through some good examples that i found uh, for the first example that i wanted to show you t today it's a very very cool game played by the legendary vishy anand uh, here with the black pieces and uh, this is now the position in the last move uh, white played the move b3 it uh, was a little bit too passive you don't play passive moves against uh, the uh, the tiger vishy because then you get smashed like in this particular game here you see we have the position white didn't challenge the center that's uh, that's what i meant the center so far is not dynamic although white could have played the move d4 and challenged uh, challenged the center but now uh Vichy anand has recognized this bishop has a good activity this bishop has also good activity the queen uh, still can go maybe on the very active square on g6 but uh, the rooks are a little bit too passive a rook lift on a6 doesn't make sense basically you're not atta attacking anything so that's why here uh, Vichy played the move rook to f6 a very very cool rook lift now the threat is to play rook to h6 getting the rook on the same file like the white king and this white uh, the white king will be endangered in the continuation of the game so here f4 was played by uh, Anand's opponent and now rook to h6 we have uh, e4 and although white tries to create now some dynamics in the center it was simply too late and uh, that's why uh, Anand's opponent got punished because here uh, Vichy played simply queen to g6 after uh, f takes e4 queen to g3 and in this position white resigned so you see this rook lift was very very effective let's see a possible continuation you could try maybe something like h3 but now simply rook takes h3 uh, bishop takes h3 and queen to h3 with this activity of this bishop we created a very very nice checkmate pattern so uh, very very important mo move to recognize here rook to 
uh, f6 an improvement of the rook but that was all possible because these other pieces basically were on the best places so i'm not seeing a better uh, square for the bishop uh, for this light square bishop so the bishop has already the best activity the bishop on b6 has also the best activity the queen could uh, go into the game like you saw here on g6 but now it was very important to recognize this rook to f6 possibility so let's see now another example here we have again a uh, position in which the center is a little bit blocked out, nothing is happening in the center. White has a good activity with all of these pieces. Uh, you see the knight is on a very nice square, on the, it's on a centralized square on the e4. The bishops are aiming really dangerously here against Black's king. The queen has a huge, huge activity, so that's why the this rook lift this potential rook to f3 move is sort of a must move in which we include all of our pieces in the attack basically what we want to do is just improve the position of the rook because that's the last piece that's that needs improvement so it's a game played by walter sean brown against juan manuel belon lopez all of the games that i use in this particular video will be in the description below so you can check out maybe the whole games analyze them on on, on some engines uh, they are really really instructive chess games here in the game white played rook to f3 because that's the only uh, piece that needs improvement all the other pieces are perfectly fine some of my of us would try some tactical ideas would search for uh, for some great great uh, other uh, attacking possibilities but here this rook to f3 basically uh, loses immediately immediately here for black because in the game queen to a5 was played by black with some checkmate threats here maybe if the rook moves here on h3 then we would have some dangerous queen to e1 ideas and you can pause the video and uh, try to find the best next move uh, after that move it was basically game over uh, black resigned immediately after this move and it was of course the move queen takes h7 uh, in this position black resigned because let's see the possible continuation king takes h7 now rook to h3 very important check you could maybe go here too uh, with the king on g7 but now bishop to h6 uh, you have only once uh, two squares the h7 square or the h6 but the same thing happens here I if you try here uh, king to h7 then you get bishop to f8 a very very cool checkmate you cannot cover with the knight well, the same thing happens if you go here for instance on uh, h8 the same idea we have again this very very nice discover check and now you could maybe cover with uh, with the knight but again rook takes h4 and it's game over so uh, let's see now another example here we have again the same position a similar position in which white has really a good activity with these two bishops these knights are centralized the queen is perfectly fine here uh aiming on both sides has also a nice activity on the e-file so when we watch the position here the only piece that needs improvement uh, is this rook on c1 it's the only piece that could somehow uh, be improved uh, it could participate more in the attack although it already creates a very very uh, nice support of the c file because you don't want to lose also uh, some battles on some files against your opponent but now uh, here it was a game by uh, played by larry mark christiansen a uh, very very cool grandmaster he played some really great tactical battles here he played rook to c3 with the idea to place the rook uh, here on h3 again uh, creating some dangerous threats against this uh, h7 square in the game uh, b5 was played but the rook to h3 anyway because here if you for instance take that's uh, the problem if you for instance take then we have bishop takes h7 knight takes h7 and now queen to uh, h5 it would be game over uh, for for black so that's why here after the move um, rook to h3 uh, here knight to d5 was played a very important reloading idea of um, of uh, blacks because now bishop to h7 doesn't work because after uh, knight takes h7 this queen to uh, queen to h5 idea doesn't work anymore because we would then have another knight to defend so that's why after this move knight from b to d5 here larry mark christiansen found a nice nice tactical shot he played the move knight to d7 deflecting the knight from the defense of this h7 in the game uh, here queen to c7 was played but now bishop to uh, bishop to h7 again the same tactical motive 
after this move black simply resigned let's see the possible continuation again we would have this queen to h5 idea if we try this reloading system we would have knight takes f6 knight takes f6 and now queen to h8 and again it's game over so you see it was all possible these great tactics were possible because uh, larry mark christiansen found a very nice rook lift but that's the point uh, all of the other pieces were on simply good squares simply the rook on c1 was not and that was simp a simple uh, improvement of the piece and you see how dangerous it can be for your opponent so again uh, here is the position again we have a problem uh, here for black and for white it is uh, really again sort of a static position no one wants to lose the dynamics here in the center if you for instance from white's perspective uh, take out this knight on c6 then black would simply improve, improve the position of the pawns in the center with its on b take c6 ideas you see this bishop uh, still cannot be improved white's bishop also the black pieces are not so easy to improve because you could try maybe something like knight to b4 kicking away the queen but now the queen comes simply on b1 you haven't gained anything and again we have a position in which basically all of our pieces are on good squares but the rooks still need some more activity so that's why here black tried in the game the move rook to e5 we're aiming against this h3 uh, pawn it's the main weakness in white's position in the game rook to h1 and now simply rook to h5 king to g1 bishop takes uh, h3 we have uh, bishop to uh, f3 attacking but now rook to uh, e5 and again we can go back with a rook after knight takes um, uh, c6 we have b takes c6 and now bishop to d4 here bishop to f5 um, e4 was played rook takes e4 and knight takes e4 knight takes e4 and now queen to uh, e2 i'm gonna stop here uh, and uh, i'm not going to show you the whole game this rook lift uh, ended with a position rook sacrifice but now you see we have a good good centralized knight we have weakened the pawn structure in front of uh, white's king white doesn't have any more the rook connection and what we can do in a couple of moves is play something like c5 simply pushing the pawns further and uh, creating very 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 really this dangerous central attack so uh, the evaluation here for black is better although uh, black is down the exchange but uh, here the centralized knight is really hard to crack if you for instance give up your light square bishop by taking out the knight on e4 we can simply take out with the bishop and with this light square problems uh, i think uh, black uh, has a comfortable game white would always be a little bit stuck to the defense uh, from get from getting checkmated so that's why i think black has a good position although as i said down the exchange so uh, let's you know the last example uh, here again it's a position in which we have a good activity with our pieces so these three pieces have a good activity we have a battery on the f file and the activity of the bishop on f5 is perfectly fine here it's a game played by the legendary beast from baku gary kasparov uh, here again we can try rook to d3 a very important rook lift because nothing is happening again in the center we see uh, we have now this blocked pawn structure in the center uh, the dynamics is off here in the center so now a rook lift is really possible nothing can really happen i think in the center you're not endangered so far on the c file it's very hard for black to include the rook here on c8 because this bishop's activity is perfectly fine so now you see this rook to d3 makes perfectly sense in the game uh, rook to c7 was played rook to g3 you see how uh, this rook dances uh, on the th on the third rank here queen to e7 was played and now rook to g3 creating a very important uh, attack against uh, black's king here on the g file there are some tactical threats now uh, queen knight to e6 was played queen to e3 with the idea of course to play uh, queen takes h6 uh, here in the game that's why king to h8 was played and now h3 creating some breathing space here by Garek kasparov <coughs> we have queen to b4 uh, rook to g4 you see how uh, active now this rook is not that it only defends this d4 pawn we have again moved uh, a rank higher now with the rook now it's even a better activity with our rook on g4 queen takes b2 it's not about pawns anymore because this game is really really active in the game king to h2 was played queen to b4 now bishop to d3 we have queen to e7 now this other rook comes into the game uh, again a very important rook lift if you take of course then you get checkmated with the move queen takes h6 so that's why knight to g5 but now rook takes g5 very nice rook sacrifice by uh, the legendary gary we have um, 
h takes g5 queen takes g5 again you cannot take that's the problem because uh, here is get simply uh, e takes f6 and here you have to protect here the square with uh, moves as queen to f8 but now you get queen to h5 if you go king to g8 then you get queen to h7 and it's a very nice checkmate so after this move queen to g5 uh, black uh, tried to escape with the move king to g8 and now queen to h4 again creating this very very cool checkmate threats on the h file in the game uh, queen to a3 was played but not a problem we can simply protect this bishop keeping our activity here in the game g6 was played and now you know Gary was all about tactics bishop takes g6 we have queen takes f3 and now queen to uh, h7 very important checking to f8 and now simply uh, here Gary simply took g takes f3 and in this position uh, black resigned so i hope you realized i said yes as i said these are the most important principles of a rook lift so advanced pawn that's why it's very important to gain space in an opening uh, creating static positions in the center then you could have a very nice rook lift possibility and also try to um, evaluate a little bit your activity of your pieces if you see that your knights your bishops your queen is perfectly fine then you should activate the rook somehow and you saw in this uh, couple of examples how dangerous this rook lift can be and effective also when you play it and uh, these players were basically helpless against uh, this very very nice attacking formations okay i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope um, um, that you realize these ideas will continue to follow uh, this basics in chess series with some more attacking themes in the middle game meanwhile you can watch my other basics in chess videos from the series with some more opening principles middle game strategies and the end game strategies and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzles videos in which i show you all of the possible tactical motifs that can happen to you in a chess game see you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course